persons who are testifying today. For Ms. Robinson, uh, do you know what percentage of women's sports consists of, of transgender participants? It is a very small number. I can say that there are about that the Williams Institute has um, estimated about 300,000 trans youth total in the United States. That's less than a percentage of a percent. And when some of these laws pass in places like Utah, they are putting into place broad sports bans that ban kids from playing as early as the age of five years old. In Utah specifically, uh, when the governor explored more about that piece of legislation, he last year called it cruel because it actually only impacted four trans students in the state and only one trans girl. So we know that there's a very small percentage of, of trans women that are actually playing in sports that these bills are targeting. So, you know, it's, it's I hardly know what to say because I would think that um, human rights belong to everyone and that trans rights are human rights and I think we must do more to ensure that the trans community and the LGBTQ plus community more broadly can live as their authentic selves, free from the threat of and real violence or discrimination. So, Ms. Walker, thank you very much for being here. Do you do you play in sports? Do you participate or compete in sports? I do not. So, uh, would you say that most? Uh, I would think that that most transgender. Uh, girls are not competing in sports, but they just want to, you just want to be able to f be free from these kinds of totally discriminatory laws that, that, that uh, does not allow you to be yourself. Yeah, um, that's definitely the case. Uh, whereas I don't personally compete in sports, so I can't speak for the trans kids mm -hmm. that do compete in sports. I will say that it's even more scary for us um, in situations like that, because can you imagine somebody like me competing, having to compete in a men's sports team? Um, that would be detrimental to my mental health, um, and mm -hmm. I would have, I would feel unsafe. Um, and so I think uh, things like the Equality Act are necessary to protect these trans people from discrimination, because we have the right. I have the right as a woman, just as Miss Gaines has the right as a woman to compete in women's sports. And just because I wasn't born in a female body doesn't mean I don't have that same right. Thank you. And, and, and as long as we're focusing on sports, of course, we know that there are huge, huge differences in so-called male sports and the support that's given to male sports and male so-called male athletes versus uh, women's sports. And, you know, there's all kinds of data about the discrimination in these uh, in male, so-called male and so-called female sports. In fact, one of my colleagues, who is very much opposed to transgender persons competing in female sports, said if we allow transgender uh, persons to compete in, um, against females, that, that uh, we're going to see coaches encouraging boys to become transgender to compete against girls. Ms. Robinson, is this what's happening in sports? No, it is not. Um, there is an incredible process that people have to go through to come out that can be painful, that's about exposing yourself to your family, to your friends in different ways. I can't imagine someone enduring all of that uh, simply to play a sport. These are people that are only trying to live, as Harley has told us, to play sports that match their gender identities so that they can get all the positive benefits that we've talked about. Self-esteem building, self-confidence, the ability to work within a team. I just can't see why we would deny that opportunity to children as young as five years old. One last question. So we have all of these laws, don't say gay, and other kind of laws. Um, maybe this is a question for Dr. Lopez. Uh, as you work with uh, uh, transgender community, LGBTQ persons, so what do these kinds of uh, bans on books, what kind of impact do they have on the persons that you uh, treat? <clears throat> well, um, <clears throat> these are, uh, one has to remember that transgender children and adolescents are already a vulnerable population they uh, have to be make an extra effort compared to non-transgender children to socialize, to feel like they belong, to participate in sports, which they have the right to, as Harley said. And if there's um, already a climate of 
you can be targeted, you will be treated differently. These kids tend to isolate themselves. I have patients who have no friends, like zero friends. Mm. I have patients that are just do online or homeschool because they're terrified about going to school, um, let alone participate in sports. That can be terrifying for them. Um, and they, I have, I have one patient that I saw last week that the mom told me is a 12 year old who plays soccer and it's not competitive. It's just with the school. And she told me this bill is going to be devastating for my child. I will have to get out, move out of state if the, the bill that bans sports participation passes, because that is what had, that has kept my child alive. That was the thing that helped me engage and uh, feel accepted with peers. So yes, all this climate is really harming the social life and the growth of, of, of these, my patients, of these kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Whitehouse. Thanks very much. Um, appreciate this hearing, Chairman. Appreciate the panel being here. Um, 